I want to thank everybody for joining us. Today we're answering questions from the last video about the Beginner's Guide to Capturing and Streaming. Today we're going to look at what it's going to take for streaming requirements. Now the major components I've got up here of which camera, capture device, computer, and a cable to get us from the capture device to the camera. And this cable can be lots of things and I don't want to get more into details about that. But probably two of the most important things before we ever get to the hardware, number one, what are the streaming requirements for YouTube? And number two, what's your bandwidth? I'm going to take you and show you, we've done a test of our bandwidth. We have a 12 megabit connection. With 12 megabit, that means we can do 1080, 60. That allows us an 8 to 10 megabit upload. With 12 megabit, we've got room for some variance. Because you have to allow for overhead and throttling. There's some of that going back and forth. That data stream is not always consistent and constant. Sometimes it will uh, go a little bit more and do a little bit less. So with 12 megabit, I'm safe for that. Now, if I want to stream 4K, I've got to have four times as much bandwidth to do 4K. So I don't have the bandwidth to stream live 4K. If you do, fantastic. Okay, number two. The next requirement, since we're talking about this on YouTube, what are the requirements for streaming on YouTube? Two things you can go two directions. If you have under 1,000 subscribers, you cannot stream from a wireless device. Even a professional device, which is wireless, unless you know how to do the RTMP, which is another video. Live View has some information about that. I can put a link up. What you have to do, you have to stream from a computer. And that's part of this purpose build. So if you've got less than 1,000 subscribers, you're going to have to have a computer. And that's why I say start with something that you can build upon. If we do one computer, one capture device, everything I've got that I see, that you see, that I can plug into the... Uh, video switch can still go through this one device. So with this one device, I can still grow. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. One thing I have to do with this camera because HDMI out is I have to plug in a converter. So that converter gets me to SDI. So that brings up another question. Of the type of capture devices available, this is USB 2. So let's look at the connectivity based on these capture devices. Now this is the current version. The version we have is one back. This is the Elgato HD60 capture card. It's actually a capture device, but they call it a card, so so be it. You can get an idea of the price. For a long time, these were scarce as hen's teeth, and the price was ridiculous. They were just uh, outrageous. They're coming back down into uh, some reality. Now, this says USB 3. I would not try to do any kind of streaming on USB 3. Uh, the one we have, which is the previous version, will work on USB 2. Keep it to either a USB 2 or skip over to USB C. The problem we had and are still having and have had for about 8 or 10 years with USB 3. If you're on Intel, you should be fine. The problem is on AMD with the chipsets they use, they've not been uh, capable of the bandwidth to stream at uh, full bandwidth. So don't. Don't try. Otherwise, if it's on a desktop, I'd say you need, a ca uh, you need another card in there, which is a Renesis chipset for USB 3. So I wouldn't do that. Stick with USB 2. This particular version was USB 2. The previous version of that is USB 2. I'll put up a link to it. But if you use that, if you can put it on a USB 2 port, that'd be my way to go. Otherwise, I would jump over that and I would put it on USB C. The third option, and I'll show you a device I'll have a link up, would be to go to something with Thunderbolt. Now, if you've got a laptop that's got Thunderbolt in it, you're in business. But again, that's more of a product that if you're going to be doing a lot of this, if you're just starting out, this is a good place to be on a laptop. And a question came up about the computer, that's why I qualify. If you're on a laptop that's about four years old, you're looking at an i7 with four cores. Do not buy a brand new laptop with four cores or less. Uh, my suggestion on a newer laptop, and we'll have another video up about another computer that we've been asked a question of, what computer would you recommend for a laptop that can do content creation for rendering, uh, capturing, and uh, video editing? We'll have a video about that. But I will say if you're buying a new computer, you want something with at least eight cores. Another video for more of those specs. Now the camera, let me show you some cameras, give you some ideas what's available. The lowest I would go in a camera is something like a Canon Vixia. Now we used uh, previous models of a few years ago. The price on these I think is kind of ridiculous. This uh, shows this as a used camera. These were like $200 cameras. They're now like four or $500. Uh, I'll have some links up to Amazon. We'll also put up some links to B&H. The advantage of this, it's a small, it's a lightweight camera. When we first started, we had four of those cameras. Then we went to the G40s. Then we went the XA35s for SDI. Then when they discontinued the XA35s, we then added two XA15. So everything we do is 1080. But we started 
with a basic camera like this. It's like you know better, you do better. So with the price range of this kind of camera, these are good for 1080, and it uses the um, same kind of cable like I mentioned. This happens to be, like I said, a mono price. I'll get a link up on it. The a lot of the other cables that we've used in the past are gone. They're out of stock. And I don't know if this monoprice cable is still available, but it's, a th it's an ultra-thin cable. It doesn't put weight on the connection. I've got HDMI on one end, and I've got the mini HDMI on the other end. So it gets me out of the camera and either into the capture device, or I can go out of the camera into a converter, into the switch, and then into the capture device. There's, there's other equipment that's, that goes in the link, but I'm not having to replace anything. Only thing we did was upgrade the cameras, but they're still 1080, and you're going to see why here in a minute. So that's an entry-level camera, video camera that I'd start with. Then if you're looking for, like, say, 4K30, this Canon camera will do 4K30. The question is you have to look at is what do you get coming out of the uh, mini HDMI. And then the current version is a Canon Vixia HFG60. And again, it'll do 4K30. And it gives you some idea of the price. Those have been fairly constant and consistent. That's a $1,700 camera. Yes, they have better optics. But... When you take the next step up, if you'll notice the price of this Canon XA40, which is a professional camera, versus this high-end consumer camera, which is a Canon Vixia G60, the professional camera is less expensive. So I want to share that with you to uh, keep your eyes open and be aware of what you're doing. But you need to kind of be able to reverse engineer where you're at and where you want to go and see what it's going to take to get there. In other words, you may have to get some stuff now until you can decide how far this is going to go. If this is a business and you're going to do this for you, or if this is a business and you're going to do this not just on a consumer level, but you're going to do this for somebody else. So you need to have all your ducks in a row. And I'm trying to show you how to uh, keep this simple, but how to grow this so that you're not wasting time, you're not wasting any money. But you also kind of get an idea of where we started. In other words, when we started with those four cameras because we bought a video switch, you know, budget is is budget is. We had to start somewhere, so we started with those little Canon cameras that hold in the palm of your hand. We started with four of those, then we had to have converters. So you got a $200 camera with a $300 converter. That's a $500 camera. The converters still work. We do other stuff with them, but the cameras we don't use. We could, but we don't because uh, we keep everything on the cameras with SDI. Only the computers are HDMI, but that's a whole other topic. So as we travel through cameras... A step up from that camera would be a Canon XF400. And it, um, it, it changes such that the easiest way to show you the real difference in this next level of camera, this camera can be had two ways. And this is easier to show from B&H. I'll put a link up. Now, again, this is a Canon XF400. This is a 4K60. We're not talking a 4K30 camera. That's a big deal. Now, if you'll notice, this camera is available in two directions, with HDMI 2.0 out and with HDMI 2.0 3G. Now, this is more in line with the camera that one of our subscribers asked and said he's got Sony cameras, and that's what he had, HDMI 2.0 out and 3G SDI. Folks, 3G SDI is 1080. If you want uh, 4K 30, that would be 6G. If you want 4K 60, that's 12G. So if you've only got HDMI out, you've got a pro camera, but it's kind of neutered. And if you're going to go with 3G, I would... I would drop down from that. So this is kind of a tough area to be in because you're paying, if you'll notice, for HDMI out, you're paying $2,500. For, for SGI out, which is only $1,080, you are paying $3,000. I say this because, in, in my opinion, that camera does not make sense because if you're only going to get 1080 out of the 3G SDI, then you might as well get a 1080 camera, which is something more like the XA15. Yes, this has better optics, but for the money, uh, you're not looking at one camera when you start getting into something like this you're looking at more cameras if you're going to go down that 4k path these are considerations you need to be aware of so right now my opinion is still if that's what you're going to do and that's your business that's one thing but if you're just getting started streaming i'd keep it simple with these basics that we've talked about but i got one more camera i want to show you to help you understand how this goes when you go 4k 60 and you get 4k 60 out of the sdi connection and this camera also we will look at it b and h and this camera is a Canon XF705. It has a one-inch sensor. And if you'll notice, it can do H.265, which is a more efficient codec. But this camera has come down in price. This used to be a $7,500 camera. Now, for those of you that are balking at the price, it's a long stretch to get from a $500 camera to a $7,000 camera. But sufficient and suffice to say, 
This is 4K60, and that is 12G SDI out of the SDI connection. So when someone says they want to do 4K, all this stuff runs through my mind. And my first question is, do you have the bandwidth? Number two, do you understand what the parameters and the specifications requirements are for streaming on YouTube? Under a thousand, over a thousand. So if you're under a thousand and you're streaming not on your account, but somebody else's account, then you're going to have to have a computer purpose built. That's a rack mount. And unless you've got a live U device and understand the RTMP, how to, how to get around that. But I would be concerned at violating the toss. So I'd keep it simple with a computer. And I would probably be using a rack mount computer so I'd have more muscle. I can build more muscle in a desktop than I can acquire in a laptop. But this laptop is a whole lot easier to carry. So there's always trade-offs. So that's the cameras. Now, a cable that I can show you that I have not tried, I'm a little concerned about the size of it. It's not uh, a smaller cable like I like, but it looks flexible. This is Lincoln Perk, a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, something I could use on a camera like this. Two meters, six feet. My concern on a standard HDMI cable, uh, keep it short. I try to keep those under seven or eight feet. The cables we use the most of, uh, I'll also have a link up, but they're HDMI to HDMI. We have those in two links, eight foot and, and a four foot. But when I get to something little like this, I try to stay away from red mirror cables because red mirror cables, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's hit or miss. But I prefer ultra thin because of the weight you put on those cables on that connection to that camera, especially the camera's going to be moving around. And that's the advantage of SDI. SDI is made to be plugged and unplugged. It's a professional connection. But you got to start somewhere. you got to grow. So if you're looking at cameras, if you're looking at capture devices, you know, consumer versus professional, that can go two directions. But I wanted to show you this cable. Mini HDMI to HDMI, it's important. The other option you can get is if you use standard HDMI cables, use an adapter. The problem with adapters is it adds more weight to the connection. So you just have to be aware of that. But if you've got to get the length and you've got to go the distance, here's the way to go. I'm not certain about the pronunciation. I asked the company about the correct pronunciation. The gentleman I was speaking with couldn't tell me, but I'll just say Rupro. That's what it looks like. We're going to be taking a look at one of these fiber cables, but you can get these out to quite a distance. We will be looking at a particular 33 foot fiber cable. And if you'll notice, these things go all the way out to 100 feet. But the thing you need to also be aware of is if you've got to get the camera out to that distance, again, I would use a converter. That's a $170 cable. I mentioned this because, like I said, I don't remind replacing one of these cables. They're about 10 bucks. I got a red bag full of HDMI cables because you have to have connections and it's got to work when it's got to work. I would be very upset if I had to start replacing more than one of those. I'd be upset if I had to replace even one. In fact, if I were using one of those, I would probably put something on both ends to protect the ends and not unplug them, but unplug the adapters. A couple of adapters, maybe five or six bucks a piece, would be a whole lot cheaper than replacing that cable. So we're going to be looking at one of those, and we're going to test it. We're going to scale it up to see what kind of distance we can get. But this is one direction you can go if you have to be that way. Fiber. The purpose of this video was in, in response to questions from the Beginner's Guide to Capturing and streaming video. I want to thank everybody for the comments. And based on the bulk of questions, the next one coming up, we're going to answer the intelligent CPA. And she asked about a laptop that I've already mentioned. And I will just say for those that want to know that now and don't want to wait for the video, uh, we're probably looking at something like an Alienware that has the, the muscle inside of it, an Alienware 17. So we'll put a link up, but the next video, that's what we're going to be talking about. So I want to keep this tight and keep this short. I hope this helps. Capture device, camera, computer, and a cable to get from the capture device to the camera. Check your bandwidth and know your requirements on YouTube. And uh, I think Clay Jarvis Guitar, he's um, on the road right now, and he's going to be doing a road trip with a group. They're going to be playing live. And I asked him, do you have the gear to do it live? If they weren't so far away, I'd go do it myself. But that needs to be something like a live view pack. So hope you enjoyed this. I want to thank you for watching. We're on to the next video, and we're out.